Morning, everybody. Oh, it's a wonderful Sunday. <clears throat> Boy, what a fight last night. Jaime Munguia, Spike O'Sullivan. I gotta say, um, I know there's gonna be a lot of critics out there, but I feel <clears throat> Munguia passed, uh, a, to actually took a big step in his middleweight debut last night against a solid opponent, a guy that's a you know top 10 guy. The guy's only lost to the likes of <clears throat> Billy Joe Saunders, Chris Eubanks, and David Lemieux. All three former champions. So, I mean, the thing is, or current champions, actually. Um, one of the things that I, I think I was impressed really with last night with Mungia was obviously his head movement, which we knew Jaime had. You know, and I feel a lot of what Jaime showed last night, I understand people are going to feel it's a reflection of his training with um, Eric Morales. But for me personally, um, it's still too early in the game to make that call. Um, that's muscle memory, and that's all the stuff that he learned from the great trainer Robert Alcazar. I, I, you know, watching Robert in the gym with Jaime, with my brother, you know, Robert pushed all those issues. Use the jab, Jaime, you know, don't load up, you know. So, I mean, Jaime did those things. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people forget, you know, Jaime's 23 years old. And um, he was thrusted into a world championship at a very early age, and he's still maturing, but I'll tell you right now, um, his power, uh, I thought his speed was impressive, his head movement was impressive. The fact that in the 11th round, he was still able to throw with that amount of, of veracity, I mean, is impressive. The thing that really got me last night, though, was just once again, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be straightforward with this. The horrible job done by Sergio Mora. Um, I don't know what Sergio, honestly, I don't know what Sergio Mora's personal issue is with, with Jaime Munguia. Maybe, maybe it's a Latin thing. I don't know. <clears throat> but, you know, Mora being from East L.A. and Mugia being from Tijuana. You know, to me, Mora just consistently always tries to find a way to, um, to bash Jaime. You know? And the thing is, it's like, you know, he, he, it was almost like he was trying to, like, put that air, a sense that, you know, Mugia is not going to pass this test. Mugia has too many holes in his... In his offense, especially with his defense. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Um, Mugi, I mean, I don't see him saying stuff about like that about a guy's like, you know, Jermel Charlo, who to me is, I mean, Harrison couldn't miss. He was completely dominating the fight. But, you know, you won't, you won't hear more, you know, say something about him, obviously because he's on a, a different platform, but it doesn't make a difference. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, Mora picks and chooses his favorites. He's, he's no different than Timothy Bradley, no different than Andre Ward. And I'm not even going to mention guys like Chris Mannix and those other guys because they're not even boxing people. So the thing is, um, you know, Mongia went in there and, and, and handled business, did what he had to do. He made a tough guy quit, you know. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, uh, O'Sullivan was looking for a way out early into that fight. Mongia could almost probably could have ended that fight in the first round after he caught him with that big punch in, in the first round. You know, and I know people are going to go back and go, well, you know, David Lemieux did this and David Lemieux did that. That's fine. Whatever. You know, I mean, you know, styles make fights. And the thing is, is that Spike O'Sullivan fought a different fight against Jaime Munguia than he did against Spike, against David Lemieux. Against David Lemieux, he went in there reckless, you know, throwing punches, trying to, you know, get, a, you know, engage him with Lemieux and got caught. Now, and then Mora, you know, obviously, you know, he went crazy and stuff when Munguia got caught um, at the end, I believe it was the second round. Uh, after he'd hurt Spike again, you know, he wasn't rocked. You know, he got a little shook. He got stopped a little bit. But, I mean, watch it again. Mungia never took a backward step. That's when you're hurt, you know. Mungia was hitting, this, was hitting a, a solid 160-pounder in, in Gary Spike O'Sullivan and pushing him back with that jab. And what about that piston power jab that Mungia showed last night? That's a weapon in itself, you know. And then, you know, at the end of the fight, you know, Mugia did what he had to do. And, um, you know, they asked Mugia, they kind of put Mugia on the spot. And they asked him, of course, you know, Jaime's going to, you know, he's not going to cower away from anybody. And I know right away people are going to be like, oh, well, he's not ready for guys like Triple G or, you know, or, the, you know, Charlo or who was the other one you were saying? Or Canelo. Time will tell. But I'll tell you something right now. 
I think he's definitely ready for, for Triple G. Because, you know, based off of what has Triple G done? Looked like shit against, you know, Steve Rolls until he stopped him. A nobody from Canada. Nobody ever even heard of. And then he gets in there and gets a, a midget in, you know, Sergei Demichenko. And Demichenko almost ends him. And a lot of people felt Demichenko won the fight. And now he's going to fight another nobody. Some guy that, they, you know, that they pulled out of a out of a Cracker Jack box from one of these, you know, made up sanctioning bodies. It's ridiculous. So he's not preparing himself for a tough fight against a, a big physical kid like Mungia. Mungia is a monster. So, you know, we'll see. I don't see Triple G's people taking that fight. You know? Now, Canelo, Canelo's the buddy man. The biggest money, I think, for Canelo to make in the middleweight division right now is not against Demetrius Andre. It's not against a Triple G in a trilogy. It's not against um, a rematch against maybe Daniel Jacobs or, um, let's say, even Jamar Charlo. It's against Jaime Munguia on Mexican Independence Day. Single de Mayo. That's what it is, man. You talking about a mega fight? You know? Guatemala, Guatemala versus Tijuana. Look it up. Long history. You know, a lot of times uh, the, the Chicanos from uh, Guatemala tend to be a little bit more uppity. And the ones from Tijuana, they're just ordinary, hardworking people. And I'll tell you something right now, that fight's going to sell out anywhere. Because, don't get me wrong, Canelo is a very, very complete fighter. And he does have power. And, you know, he has the ability to go in there and, you know, do what he has to do and be successful. But is he vulnerable? He is. Canelo could be hit. So, I mean, the thing is, is, you know, can can he take the punches from, you know, a Jaime Munguin? I know people are going to say, well, you know, well, he just took the punches from a Sergey Kobolov. Yeah, a, a, a washed up Sergey Kobolov, who I think went in there and did a half-ass effort. You know? And I'm not even going to say Sergey Kobolov hits as hard as Jaime Munguia. Now, I know Gary Spike O'Sullivan t- was taking Munguia's shots, but he was hurt almost every time. But Munguia was, just wasn't pressing the action. He didn't want to go in there and do anything sloppy. He made that one mistake and he didn't make it again. You know? Spike O'Sullivan's a puncher. I know Moore said he isn't, but what the, what the hell's Moore know? It's a guy who had three knockouts in his life. You don't know nothing about knockouts. You know? I'm going to laugh one day, you know, when uh, Sergio Moore, you know, when he confronts Jaime Munguia, I want to see what he, if he's going to have that big mouth against Munguia at that point. I doubt it. You know, because the, guy, the guy's definitely got an issue with Mungia. You know, he, he he's always so hard on the guy. And then, you know, he has to bring up, oh, well, you know, they didn't bring up the boogeyman. Mungia didn't bring up the boogeyman. Like, Mungia's going to avoid Demetrius Andre. Come on, give me a break. Who is Demetrius Andre fought? Okay? Demetrius Andre hasn't fought anybody. And, he, and, and get this right, too. I've talked to the Charlos. I've talked to a lot of these people. Demetrius Andre is not putting any contracts out there. He's not looking for nothing. Look at his history. Whenever he's got an opportunity for a big fight, even when he had that opportunity against Billy Joe Saunders, he got hurt. Demetrius Andre is the one who's always looking for a way out. And then he's going to sit back and cry. Nobody wants to fight me. He does the same crap that Terrence Crawford does. That's bullshit. If you're going to fight, you're going to fight. Terrence Crawford, you know, I don't want to change the subject, you know, but he does the same thing. He did it with Cal Brook. He did it with... You know, um, earlier with Al Spence, and he's done it with Danny Garcia and Sean Porter. But we all know where you know Crawford's going. Crawford's going. You know, he's got he's got to you know. I know personally, I, he, he's got to fight Ramirez after v- Ramirez destroys washed up Victor Postal in China. They're going to match up Crawford against once again a guy who's moving up in weight. Well, that's it. So, like I said, I mean. I thought Munguia did a good job last night. He's only going to get better. You know? I mean, I don't understand so many, so much hate that gets thrown towards Munguia. You know, you got you got Sergio Crawford. I mean, I'm sorry. You got Sergio Mora here who consistently calls Munguia a weight bully. Let me tell you something, Sergio Mora. What about Jared Hurd? Who's actually bigger than Munguia? I never once heard you call him a weight bully. You can call Jamel Charlo a weight bully. He's a big guy too. But you don't call him a weight bully. But you're always going after Munguia. 
Let me tell you something right now. I don't care if a guy's six foot seven or if a guy's six foot one or five foot nine. If he makes the 154, that's what it is. That's not being a weight bully. It's called conditioning, Sergio. So Munguia and his people decided, you know, to move up to middleweight because, you know, Jaime's growing. He's still a young boy. He's still a young man. And I don't know, I'll tell you something, another thing about Jaime on a personal level. You know, I've met Jaime, you know, I've, I've, I've hung around him. Like my brother, Mike, who, um, if he's listening right now, you know, he's actually out in London right now. Munguia is one of the most humble, gracious, well-mannered, generous individuals you'll ever meet. Just a really good human being. Can I say the same for, for either one of the Charlo brothers? Can I say the same for Demetrius Andre? Can I say the same for Canelo Alvarez and some of the things that he's experienced in his past? Or even Triple G? No. But I can say that about Jaime Munguia. He is a true people's champion. This is a guy who loves boxing. This is a guy who's a hardworking guy, you know, who learned from the best. And his time with Robert Alcazar, anybody who knows anything about trainer Robert Alcazar, you know, the famed trainer who, you know, who, who developed, created, molded Oscar De La Hoya, amongst others, um, taught Jaime those things. You know, because Robert, you know, I, I don't, he, does, he won't tolerate it. Robert, you know, he's not a flashy guy. He's a great trainer. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, Munguia is just, you know, he's just, he's just, he's just a very humble kid. He just, it, it blows me away sometimes. Uh, I'll give you a quick little story. I remember we were at a, um, one of his stable mates, uh, Michael Dorado, was uh, having a fight down at um, the Quiet Cannon over at Montebello. A little small venue, you know, local guys. And Narado, I mean, don't get me wrong, you got to keep your eye on this kid, Michael Narado, amazing fighter. But, so the ring announcers in there announcing, you know, different fighters that are in the audience and, and celebrities and stuff. Unbeknownst to him, because Jaime doesn't come in with no flash, he's got a hat on, you know, just, you know, whatever, he's sitting right there next to me and my daughter, you know, first thing Jaime walks in, he extends his hand, walks up, sits next to us, and, um, you know, they didn't mention Mungia, you know, here's a WBC champion sitting right here. You know, junior middleweight champion of the world. And Jaime didn't have his people or anybody go up there and, and look for that, you know, that, that, that recognition. He was there to support his stablemate, Michael Norado. That's the difference. You see what I'm saying? So, like I said, I mean, before you throw hate towards Jaime, remember this. We got ourselves a, we got ourselves a, an undefeated rising champion. I'm going to still call him a champion because in my book, he's a champion still. And it's like, you know, when, when you hear things from Sergio Moore, is that the insane things that he says, like, you know, um, being the fact that, that Mugia is beatable. Really? Because his record doesn't say that, Sergio. Unlike you, who was very beatable, very predictable. So, I mean, the bottom line is, is before, like I said, before you throw hate towards Jaime Mugia, take a look at who this kid really is. And what he represents in boxing. And the fact that it's going to possibly set up some amazing matchups later on. They're going to entertain all fans, casual or hardcore. So that's all I got to say today. Once again, congratulations to Jaime Munguia on his impressive victory over Gary.